Welcome back to another part in the MVVM Jetpack Compose course for beginners. And in this part, we're going to work on maintaining the list position, the horizontal list position when we rotate the screen. So in the previous video or the previous couple videos, we worked on, you know, getting those nice horizontal chips in the, uh, in the toolbar for searching. And now we ran into a problem whenever we, you know, select a chip and then rotate the screen, that chip, that list position is not maintained. In order to maintain that list position, we need a custom system. So we need to kind of track the scroll position so that after the rotation, we can then restore that position. So let's go into the view model. So presentation, UI, recipe list, and then recipe list view model. Now we're gonna create a new variable because we need to track something. And we are not gonna be using a mutable state value this time, not a mutable state object. We're just gonna be using a plain old float. So var, we'll call it category, uh, you scroll position. That will be a float and set that equal to zero. So just simply tracking the position. The reason we don't need to use mutable state is because we're not reacting to the changes in that position. We're only gonna be you know, using that value when a rotation occurs. So we don't need to track it and observe it. We just need to, uh, we just need a way to store it basically. So that's why we just can use a float here. Now we need a way to change this value. And I know this isn't private. It doesn't have the private identifier at the front. So technically we don't need like a setter, but I'm just gonna make a setter because that's what we've been doing. So function, on change category scroll position and just do position equals a float type and then just do category scroll position so category scroll position equals position now i know again this isn't private so we could have just simply accessed it and changed it in the the fragments or the activity or whatever we're well the fragment in this case but i again we've been building these setter functions so i'm going to build a setter function now let's go into recipe list fragment and we can use this new value. So this is a little tricky with compose or when it comes to you know setting the scroll position anyway. There's a way that you need to do this, kind of a, a weird jetpack composey way that you need to do this. So first we need a scroll state, uh, a scroll state object. So value scroll state equals, and we're gonna use a uh, custom constructor that the jetpack compose team has built for us. So I'm gonna call remember scroll state. So remember scroll state and just initialize that. So if we take a look at this, if I control click on this, you can see that it returns a scroll state type. So there's that scroll state type and it takes a couple of values. One is the initial value and then another is an interaction state. The interaction state is for detecting certain gestures. So if I, if I hold down control click on this and I take a look at this, if I look at the definition, let me just scroll up. Wow, it's a long definition. Uh, let's see here. It allows you to build higher level com uh, components comprised of lower level interactions such as clickable, uh, draggable, and you know other interactions. So we're not going to be using that. We don't need to have any kind of interaction state. We're not interested in detecting any sort of gesture. We simply need to use this to then set the initial value after the rotation. So that's kind of just a little bit of information about this scroll state thing. And another thing that you should know is any scrollable component, like a scrollable row, scrollable column, whatever, they all have a scroll state parameter. So next I'll write a comma here and I'll write scroll state. You can see that it has a scroll state parameter. I can just set that equal to that scroll state. So currently this is doing nothing, right? Like I'm just simply initializing the scroll state object. I'm kind of coupling it to the scrollable row and we haven't really done anything with it yet. So the, the magic comes inside of the scrollable row. So what I would do is do um, scroll state. So scroll state dot scroll to, and then I would pass that scroll value. So view model dot category scroll position. And that's where we're gonna use that scroll position. So that's how we're you know restoring that scroll position after the rotation. When this gets recomposed, it's gonna say, okay, I need to scroll to you know whatever position was saved. So next is setting the scroll position. So this is how to like, you know, tell it to scroll after the rotation, but how do we actually set this value? Well, we can go inside of the on category uh, changed function here. And here's where we're selecting a category. Because if you if you think about the logic here, we want to set the scroll position when a category is clicked. So if I click on like pizza, when I do the rotation, I expect to still see pizza. That's kind of the, the key thing. If I don't have anything selected and I do the rotation, who cares? It doesn't really matter. It matters if you select something 
then do the rotation, you definitely want to see that thing is so that is selected because that just makes sense. So what we're going to do is when a new category is selected, that's when we're going to set the scroll state. So I, I want to say uh, view model dot on selected category changed. And then I can just do whoops, I can do scroll state dot value. So scroll state dot value. So that's another thing that the scroll state can be used for. Uh, looks like I'm getting a warning here. Looks like required string, but I have a float. Oh, I, I called the wrong function. This should be on change category uh, category scroll position. There we go. So that's another thing that the scroll state can be used for. It's it can be used for both getting the value and setting the value. So here we're using, um, you know, we're setting the value. We're telling it to scroll to somewhere, and because it's coupled to our scrollable row, it will do that. And here we are getting a value from the scroll state. So those are the two kind of things that you could do with it. Other than obviously the other stuff which which you talked about, which is whoops, I shouldn't have clicked on that, which was if I go into here, we have this kind of interaction state thing that we can then detect gestures and things like that. But we're not talking about that in this video. We're simply just, you know, getting the position and then setting the position after a rotation. So now let's uh, let's run this and take, oh, actually, no, I did forget one other thing. Uh, something that I forgot to do in the previous video, if we go into our, um, not food category, if we go into our chip, our food category chip class, uh, in the previous video, I think I had the color of the text set to secondary or something like that. You know, I think it was material theme secondary. Just change that color to white. So just do color.white and that will make it look much better. And again, we're going to be working on the theming stuff later in this course. We're just kind of doing some basic theming for now. So I did run this. So let's go take a look at the app. So let's scroll over. I'm going to click on donut. Now, when I rotate the screen twice, we expect to see donut still in view. So rotate, rotate. And then there we go, donut is still in view. So that's exactly what we want. So there we go, we solved our scrolling issue with the rotations, the scroll state is now maintained or it's restored after the rotations. Now in the next video, what we're gonna work on is something called state hoisting. And if you've read the Jetpack Compose documentation, I'm sure you've seen this term state hoisting there before. Um, it's a new term in terms of Android development. I've never seen it used anywhere in the documentation in terms of Android development. It's a computer science term, so it's you know well known throughout the computer your science ecosystem. But personally, I've never seen it used in the Android documentation before. And they, they talk about it with Jetpack Compose because it's a way to, um, you know, uh, I guess, clean up your code and bring the state up to the highest level. Uh, you know what, I'm not even going to talk about it because in the next video, we're going to spend time on it. So it's going to be state hoisting. And we'll clean up our code here. Because currently, if we take a look at our fragment, if we take a look at our fragment, we have kind of all of the composables in a single composable, I guess you would say, you know, we have set content, then we have everything kind of in a single composable, there's nothing that's like abstracted out. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean this up, we're going to abstract some of this stuff up out into separate composables and then um, it's going to make it look way cleaner and then also talk about state hoisting because that is you know a part of state hoisting is doing that thing abstracting out composables so i'll see you guys in that next video and of course leave some engagement new year's is coming up so maybe you want to start thinking about your special new year's engagement that you're going to leave you guys did a great job leaving me some christmas engagement today's the 27th so you left me boxing day engagement you left me christmas engagement and you left me christmas eve engagement now i don't know what comes in between you're gonna to have to come up with some more creative engagement and also don't forget to leave a like i'll see you guys in the next video